What you guys got another video here for you. What can you do about Windows privacy or privacy and telemetry in general? So we're going to talk about that in today's video because there's a lot of people that tend to worry about telemetry and a lot of people have no clue of what they're talking about. So I'm just going to give you an idea of what telemetry and privacy is and how you shouldn't be worrying about it because there's nothing you can do about it. Now, most of the trolls or people that like to stir up the trouble in the comments section are probably Linux users talking about telemetry and Microsoft and how they harvest your data, but yet they're sitting here on YouTube making comments and YouTube do exactly the same thing. Everyone collects data. There's no way to avoid it. The moment you plug in your ethernet cable, from your ISP into your router, you are being monitored and your information is being collected. Every website you go to will be listed on their servers and there is nothing you can do about it. They know how much bandwidth you're using. They know what channels you watch on your television. They know everything about you and there is nothing you can do. All this information is sent right away through your internet, which is permanently on, every device you got plugged in in your home, whether it be your mobile phone, your tablets, your uh, you know Amazon Fire Sticks, you move on to your browser and it's no different. Your browser is also harvesting information, data of all the sites you go to. And this is how you get marketed with adverts and things like this. So at the end of the day, you need a browser to browse the internet. And it doesn't matter what browser you choose, whether you choose Firefox, Google, Opera, or any other particular types of browser, you're giving your trust to that browser company uh, to be sensible with your information. So everything you search inside that little search box will be harvested. There is nothing you can do about that. Then people may want to use other browsers that they've read online that is more secure. But how would you know? You wouldn't know because you don't have access to the servers of what information is being collected and what information is being ignored. So you can go through here and do a search for, say, a phone. And before you know it, you'll get adverts for phones and you'll also have some sort of information harvested. So just for those Linux users, this is not a Windows problem. This is a privacy problem which is a global problem. No matter what operating system you're using, it will affect you. It doesn't matter whether you use DuckDuckGo, you're now giving your trust to DuckDuckGo. And yet, how would you know that you can trust DuckDuckGo? Because you can't. You don't know because you don't have access to the back end to see what's going on behind the scenes. And it's only until there's a data breach and this information is released to the general public that you find out that you know, your information wasn't as private as you thought it was. And people are so gullible. As soon as you see something like this saying no shady privacy policies or backdoors for advertisers, just lightning fast browsing that doesn't sell you out. Well, you're taking their word for that. That's all you're doing. VPN companies have said they don't keep logs, but it turns out they do because they've handed it over to the authorities. And browser extensions are no different. These can be used to harvest data. So let's use a a security add-on, an extension to your browser, for instance, an antivirus add-on that is protecting you from the sites that you go to. It's going to have to know what sites you're going to, and it can easily harvest information and send that back to the antivirus company. This is just one example, and it can be said for any one of these add-ons that can harvest information if they wanted to, and you wouldn't know whether they were doing it or not. It's just common sense to know that if it's attached to your browser, you're always going to have a risk. Loads of software companies have been caught harvesting information from their software or attachments, and then they've been exposed uh, in articles online. And this is exactly what you have to be careful of when using certain types of software. And there's also antivirus software that is running on your PC right now, which is monitoring every file and every uh, action you're doing on your computer. You can see right here, the ESET LiveGuard. We've enabled uh, the document send to ESET LiveGuard to further increase protection against uh, never seen threats. So there you go. And these files will be sent back samples 
and they will be scanned and checked and then say they're okay and you can continue to use them or download them. This is how antiviruses work. So they could be used to harvest information, see what sites you go to, and they would be able to quite easily do that. And you've got browser privacy and security add-ons here. There's other add-ons on here as well, like password managers, which are another way of harvesting information for sites that you go to. And this will obviously need to know what site you're going to to be able to protect you. So for those YouTubers who create a pseudonym name and hide all their information on YouTube and then go around trolling and leaving silly comments about blaming Microsoft for telemetry, wake up because the problem is a lot bigger. You can have a look at, say, password managers. Many of these have had data breaches and other privacy concerns. And that means that someone has got all your dirty little secrets to every site that you've had saved and passwords that you've used. And this is just another example. So people need to stop blaming one particular company and start looking at the bigger picture because the PC that you're using is constantly calling home to your ISP. The software that you use is calling home and a bunch of other uh, software that you've got installed on your PC that is running in the background like antivirus programs, they all call home. And whether you store information on the cloud, whether it will be any sort of cloud service where you put your phone attached to it and it's sending information, you are now trusting that site to be able to uh, see all of the information that you have stored on there, whether it be personal photos, videos, all of this stuff will be so, uh, stored on there. And you are now trusting that company with your private information. So for those people that think it's a Microsoft issue, it's bigger than that. And uh, at the end of the day, the moment you just let that go and just get on with using your computer, if you're that paranoid, then don't be on the internet. It's that simple. And you're not going to avoid any of this stuff by being on Linux, as Linux users like to think. Yes, Linux might not harvest information as much as what Microsoft do, but they're just a, a two-bob operating system compared to Microsoft. They're a big company, and they have been around for a long time, and they've got billions of users. Now, if you're on Windows, you may be going through and turning off a lot of these settings right here like I've shown you in videos. But there's no guarantee that any of this is going to stop any sort of uh, telemetry or data collecting on your system. You might turn this off and it might be grayed out, it might be hidden in the background, but you don't have access to the code of that operating system. So you have no clue of what's calling home and what's doing what. And if you're that concerned about it, then maybe don't use the operating system altogether. You can use Mac OS, you can use Linux, and you can use Android, or you can use Windows. There's plenty of choice out there. You don't need to keep going on about it, about telemetry. If you really want to change your operating system, if you're that concerned about it, then stop using it. That's as simple as that. And, uh, you know, a lot of these Linux users still have one foot in Windows as well. They don't want to tell you that. They'll have it in a virtual machine or they'll have it on a partition so they can go in there and play their game still, or whatever it is that Linux can't do. It's just getting a little bit old. Now, when it comes to turning on a lot of this stuff off, it does alleviate a lot of the uh, usage. So if you've got an older system, but like I said before, you still don't know what is going on in the background, and that is because it's embedded in the operating system code. And this is not open source. You can't have a look at... The Windows code and find out what is happening. So at the end of the day, you're just putting all your faith into disabling a lot of this stuff in the registry and also in group policy. But you don't know for 100% whether it's uh, still collecting information or not. Now, your network card is going to have a MAC address and everyone has a different MAC address. And also all your hardware has different hardware IDs. So it doesn't really matter what you're doing online, all of these are like a fingerprint. Uh, and that's basically it. So your router is going to have an IP address and also a MAC address and also a hardware ID, which is basically tied to that hardware. And this is going to be left everywhere you go on the internet. And again, you can use whatever you like, VPNs and other masking agents that people like to use but it's not going to do you any good. So at the end of the day, just get on with using the internet for what it is and also using your computer for what it is. Because if you're worried about all of this stuff, then the internet is not for you and you shouldn't be on the internet because you are too paranoid. 
A lot of people use VPNs for many different reasons and they put far too much faith in a VPN. And I've said this before, but at the end of the day, if you feel trusted by using a VPN, by all means do so. But it's not going to completely hide your identity. A lot of people have a misunderstanding about a VPN and what it's for. They think they're invisible on the internet and no one's going to know who they are and they can do whatever they like, but that's just not the case. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty about VPNs and about who owns them, where they're located and what their track record is and uh, no logs and all that stuff. That's for another video that is solely for uh, VPNs altogether. But what I'm trying to say is if you're using a VPN thinking you're invisible then you're mistaken and that is a big problem because you're thinking that you can go around doing whatever you like on the internet and no one's going to know what you're up to. So let's break this down real quickly. Let's just assume you're using any type of VPN. It doesn't really matter. To sign up, they have your IP address, your email, your payment details. This all goes back to you where you lived, so they know who you are. You're not going to be able to avoid that. Let's assume you go to a website. Maybe they don't keep logs on that website, but there will be a complete footprint left behind on your computer to every site that you visited, every activity you did on that site and all the stuff you downloaded. It'll all be stored on your PC. And this obviously is a incrimination to you. So you hiding through a VPN is going to make no difference. So you would have to then erase all of your hard drives every single time you use your computer, which no one is obviously going to do because it's too inconvenient. And of course, VPNs will spread fear through their advertising campaigns and their websites. So if you're using a VPN 24-7, unless you're willing to secure erase your drives every single day, then you are not secure. You're not invisible. And there is a trace of that all on your computer, on the mobile phones that you use, you're geolocated for everywhere you've been with your phone at that particular time. As soon as you walk out of your house, you're going to be on security cameras. You cannot hide and you're not invisible anywhere you go, including on your computer. The only way you're going to have complete privacy is if you disconnect from the internet and live in complete isolation. But even then, there is no you know, 100% guaranteed that you are completely invisible to the outside world because it's very hard to go somewhere without having permission to live there nowadays. So anyway, I hope this video has opened your eyes a little bit. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can go on about this stuff all day and people need to wake up a little bit and stop being so silly in the comments section and saying silly things about uh, telemetry and about privacy, because at the end of the day, you have no control. You give that up soon as you went on the internet. So stop stressing about it. Just use your computer, what it's designed to do, and just live your life and stop worrying about things that you have no control over. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'd be happy to read your thoughts and your questions or some of your opinions. Keep them civil, and I shall see you in the next video. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.